one of the more unusual storylines from this weekend's F1 event in Saudi Arabia in fact had nothing to do with Formula 1. A few hours before the race on Saturday, many fans also tuned in to watch the second F1 Academy race of the season, now being broadcast alongside Formula 1 for the first time. As with many junior formulas, younger drivers and smaller cars that can get alongside each other led to a scrappy affair that saw the safety car come out twice in a 13 lap race. Pretty fun to watch. The controversy of this race was not anything that happened between lights out and the chequered flag, but rather something that didn't happen after the chequered flag. Mercedes junior driver Dorian Pack crossed the finish line first, at the time winning the race. However, rather than do a cool down lap and head back to the grid for the post-race interviews, she instead carried on driving at full racing speed, clearly unaware that the race had finished. Instead of the 13 laps of the race, Pan instead drove 14 and a half laps at full speed before red flags were shown around the course to get her to stop. She then did make her way back to the grid, gave a rather embarrassed interview, which is understandable, before making her way up to the podium to celebrate her win. Later that evening, Race Control reviewed the incident and decided to award her a drive-through penalty, which is quite hard to serve once you're out the car and already back at your hotel. This then, of course, turns into a 20-second penalty, demoting Pan from P1 to P9, and crucially, losing her the lead of the championship. Reactions to this penalty have been... mixed. But the most popular sentiment online seems to be that Race Control and the FIA have made a bad move. Operating their car safely and following flags is ultimately the responsibility of the driver. But racing relies heavily on a mutual trust between the driver and the people operating the track, the marshals and race control. The driver can only act on information they receive, and so it's the responsibility of the people operating the track to make sure that they do. So the question therefore in this case is, did they? Firstly, I would like to answer the question, does this actually matter? So she drove a bit quick on the cooldown lap. She went around one too many times. It's a bit silly. There were some jokes about it. Is there actually a problem? Yes, we absolutely want zero risk of any people, whether that be a marshal, a driver or a spectator being hit by a car. And when a driver is going full speed thinking they're still racing, it's not that easy to spot someone on track, particularly if they've just gone around a corner which is surrounded by walls. If you've never seen someone get hit by a car, count yourself lucky. If you're wondering how bad could it be if you get hit by one of these things at 150 miles an hour, do not look up a video of that, please. Instead, go and get a tomato and hit it with a hammer. It's like that. A track is meant to be closed off with no one entering it after a race until the race director gives the all clear. However, tracks are big places, miles across in some cases, and communication issues do happen. A marshal post may have a broken radio, or fans waiting to get on the track at a track where this normally happens may get impatient being told to wait and may decide to climb the barriers. If they've seen on the big screens that everyone's taken the checkered flag, why not? Venues which are famous for their track invasions, such as Monza, typically have tens of thousands of people taking to the track quite soon after the race is over. If Max Verstappen was actually still going around at 200 miles an hour, this could be... messy. So yes, to answer the question, it is very important that a race is neutralised as soon as the session is over. To understand exactly what went wrong in this F1 Academy race and who's at fault, we need to look at the feedback loop that makes up the end of the race. This may seem basic, but bear with me. At the end of the race, the driver gets to the line, the chequered flag is waved, the driver sees the flag, and therefore the driver slows down. This is the same in every motorsport. If you go karting, if you race bikes, if you're in a lawnmower race, exactly this will happen. In more advanced forms of motorsport, it's also common that the driver and their team have a two-way radio system. And so at the end of the race, the team will typically come on and say something like, well done mate, that's P1, excellent job out there today. And therefore the driver knows the race is finished. Important to note though, that while this normally happens, this is not an official procedure. Teams don't have to tell their drivers anything. And sometimes they can't because their radio is broken due to mechanical failure, interference, whatever. I've seen quite a few people online blaming this incident on Pan's team, Prema, saying that they should have come on the radio, tell her that she's finished. However, I'm taking this off the board this is not how we're meant to organize things in motorsport, it's too prone to error. So, this feedback loop, what went wrong? 
The checkered flag was waved, we can see it in this image from the start finish stroke, so clearly there was some issue with Pan seeing it. Luckily, we actually do have Pan's onboard from the final lap, as it's also the fastest lap of the race and therefore was uploaded to YouTube. As she comes past the pit entry towards the line, we can clearly see, oh, not much. Where's the flag? So, from this perspective, the flag is being waved here behind this light board. You know, the big boards that show when it's a yellow flag or something. Obviously, a driver can turn their head and move their eyes, which we can't do in this video. So potentially, as Pan drove past this board, she could have looked up and seen the flag. However, if it was me, if I didn't see the flag from further back when I was driving towards the line, I wouldn't then turn my head around to try and check for it. I would assume it's not there and start looking towards turn one to race the next lap. So for me, it's pretty clear. This light panel should not be here. I don't know what checks happen around the circuit before an F1 weekend. I'm hoping a lot, but can you see the flag as you drive towards the line? Probably should be one of them. I get the feeling that wasn't done here. It wouldn't even be that hard to do. All you have to do is get into the flag booth and then ask yourself, can I see where the cars come from? In this case, the answer would definitely be no, because there's a huge black board in the way. Already, I would say that the penalty case against Pan should have been dismissed. This situation right here does not give her enough opportunity to do the right thing. No case, dismissed, let's go home. Even if this was Pan's fault, I would have also quite liked to have seen some kind of announcement from the circuit saying they're gonna move this panel before the next event. You know, continuous improvement, all of that. However, as good as the FIA and Formula One are at admitting when they're wrong, so far, bizarrely, nothing. We are left though with two other questions from this. Did the punishment fit the crime in this case? And is there anything else that F1 can do to ensure this kind of thing doesn't happen again? The reason that many fans were so upset in this case was that the penalty given was so harsh. Not five, not 10, but a 20 second race time penalty applied after the race, particularly considering the field had been bunched by a safety car only four laps before the end. This was applied not at the end of the race, but after the driver had taken to the podium and experienced that glory, just an absolute slap in the face. So was this the right penalty to give in this case? A drive-through penalty, which is what was given in this case, is typically a sporting penalty given for failing to follow track procedure. Things like speeding in the pit lane, unsafe pit release, or dangerous driving behind a safety car. This would then make a drive-through the correct penalty for Pan in this case. Caveat though, the FIA has become a bit loose with their application of penalties in the last few years. We typically see now actually that unsafe pit release is penalised more commonly with a 5 or 10 second time penalty, not a drive-through, and so they definitely could have done something different in this case. Within the arsenal of penalties, it is also possible to give penalties outside of events. Championship points reductions, penalty drops for the next race, financial fines, that sort of thing. As this happened after the event finished, it's impossible to argue that Pan gained any kind of sporting advantage. Therefore, a sporting penalty seems a bit harsh. If it was me, I would say a grid place drop is probably more fair. Financial fines also make sense for these kind of non-sporting safety related incidents, but these are difficult in junior formulas, which have very different economics to Formula One. Drivers have to pay for their seats in junior formulas. If a financial fine of let's say 10,000 euros is passed on to a driver, well, that might mean they can no longer afford to pay for their seat and therefore would have to drop out of the championship. Nobody wants that. One other way to decide the penalty for this instance would have been to look at the precedent, because as bizarre as this was, this has happened before. In the opening round of the 2019 Formula 2 Championship in Bahrain, Mahavir Raghunathan was one lap down after a dominating performance by Nicholas Latifi. After taking the chequered flag, a communication issue led to Raghunathan actually driving the full number of laps, i.e. one lap more than he should have. What penalty did he receive for this? 10 place grid penalty at the next event. Now, Raghunathan did finish outside the points, and so it may have been taken into consideration that a time penalty wouldn't have actually done anything and therefore wouldn't really be a penalty. So potentially the grid penalty was a second choice. However, we as fans have no way of knowing that. All that we can see is what actually happened. And so I for one would quite like some consistency. 
The final thing to cover is, could anything have been done differently? Could anything else have been done at the track to make sure a driver does not miss the checkered flag? Apart from, of course, you know, not waving it behind a large screen. Well, speaking of large screens, you could always show the checkered flag on that. It is a flag board. It's there to show flags. There would be two ways to do this. Either you just have the one board at the line show the flag, or all of them around the whole circuit could show it. Tradition is that there is only one checkered flag at the start finish line. In keeping with this, I think it would feel fine if it was also on one digital board placed at the line. That seems like a modern interpretation of that. I don't think that ruffles too many feathers. You can even still have your ceremonial flag waver person. Just also put a big digital board near them for clarity near, not in front of. This would be particularly helpful if the flag waving skills of this person are, let's say, Tim Cook level. There is an argument though, that if the driver can miss the flag in this spot, they could also miss the screen. So you could show it on every screen. This one does get a bit tricky though, as drivers still halfway around the final lap may think that this means they need to slow down. You could obviously brief the drivers and tell them if they see it halfway around the lap, they carry on racing until the end of that lap. That gets a little bit tricky though, because I mean, if you did miss it when you cross the line, you might think it only came on after the first couple turns and therefore you have to keep racing that lap. And so it's the same problem. Ultimately, flags all around the circuit fixes one problem, but then causes another. So I would say, let's not do that. We need something big and visible on the line. My preference would be something that goes the whole way over the track, such as, oh, you know, this thing that holds the lights. If these advertising boards above the lights were just replaced with some screens that showed the flag at the end of the race, or I don't know, a big word that says stop, that would be pretty clear. Obviously on some tracks, the lights aren't over the line. They're on a different place in the start finish straight. But if that really is the case, just put another one over the line. F1 can afford it. Some more radical ideas would be to have Abu Dhabi style pyrotechnics at the end of every race. You know, just launch 10 megatons of explosives at the drivers, flashbang them. They won't miss that. You could also have a system where the flag comes up on the driver's wheel revolutionary i know we see from formula one on boards that the steering wheel lights up with blue lights yellow lights red flags even flashing lights for the safety car why not just one more for the end of the race f1 academy does not currently have any flag information on their steering wheel but it wouldn't be that hard to add it you don't even need to change the steering wheels you could just make a small light bar that sticks to the top of the steering wheel and receives a signal somehow i have been to kart tracks that cost 30 pounds to drive on and they have this i'm pretty sure a race series where you have to pay 100,000 euros to enter could do it i would like to see the fia do something about this situation regardless of who's at fault here this is not a good situation we should change it be the champions of safety that you say you are FIA, admit you can do better, and then do it. Okay, okay, rant over, that's all from me. I hope you found this video interesting. I personally find this absolutely fascinating, if not a little bit concerning, that this situation can happen at all. If you liked this video, give it a like down below and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Until that time though, I've been Mr. V, and I'll see you guys later.